Hi, I'm Heather Bruschetti at the Business Council of New York State. I'm the president and CEO, and now I am the host of this podcast called Connect, the Business Council podcast. The Connect podcast aims to bring you the most interesting interviews with business leaders and newsmakers from around the state. And now here's the host of Connect, Heather Bruschetti. Hello and welcome into another edition of the Connect Podcast. I'm Patrick Bailey. I'm the Communications Director here at the Business Council of New York State. President and CEO Heather Bruschetti had a scheduling conflict and could not do this podcast. And I know she's upset because she is a lifelong Bills fan, as I am. Uh, and she, anytime she has the opportunity to talk about the Buffalo Bills, she'll take it. So uh, I will pinch hit for her today. There's no uh, football reference other than pinch hit that I can think of, which is obviously a baseball reference. So that'll be the, uh, the cheesiest part of this podcast. Today's guest, Tim Graham, a journalist with the online sports publication, The Athletic. And he does feature articles, which um, I think are some of the best among anybody at The Athletic. And that's not just because he's sitting here. Uh, Tim has been covering the Bills sports many, many years. And I don't want to date him and make him sound old, but uh, for many different publications, he was uh, very well known for being at the Buffalo News. And today we are talking about the Bills in the new potential stadium in Western New York, where it could uh, where it could go and possibly the most important question, how much will it cost and at whose expense? So Tim, before I get into it, appreciate you coming on and welcome. And it's chilly here in Albany. I'm assuming it's still chilly in Buffalo. I haven't stepped outside today, so I can't tell you exactly what it's like outside. But the reason I have not stepped outside is because it's pretty friggin' cold. So that makes yeah, sense. I, I, yeah, I, I think that's a safe assumption that it's really cold here. All right, fair enough. Um, but let's talk about why we're here. We're, we're Let's start from the beginning. We're talking about a new Bills stadium, which is inevitable at this point. So let's start from the beginning. The Bills, their current stadium, which is now High Highmark Stadium. I remember it as a kid, as a rich stadium, uh, going to Bills games for 28 of the 38 years of my life. Um, but the stadium itself, current stadium, 48 years old, built back in 73. It's in Orchard Park, for those that don't know. That's about 15 minutes south of Buffalo, a suburb. Well, let's start from the beginning. Then, Why is 2022 the year to get a deal done on a new stadium? Well, it has to be done because of the timeline involved. Uh, renovating the current stadium is not an option because of the disrepair that it is in and the amount of money that it would cost. Uh, you'd basically be throwing money down the well um, and you'd run into a situation where, okay, let me say this off the top, the current, so we can set up the parameters of, of what we're about to talk about. The current lease that the bills are under expires in July 2023. So that sounds like we have a lot of time, but really that's only one more football season. You know, this is would be before the 2023 football season ends. So the bills have one more football season, the 2022 season of knowing where they are going to be. Now, there have been situations in the NFL in the past, and they've rarely worked out where the local governments will say, okay, well, no big deal. We'll sign you to one year lease extensions until we figure this out. Well, that is how the Oakland Raiders ended up in Las Vegas. The bills don't want to get into a kick the can down the road situation that has cost or burned other teams to where the governments are just trying to buy time. So the bills have set a deadline of, we need to know where we're going to be uh, and this lease is running out quickly. And now when you say, uh, we are, when you say we need to know where we're going to be, that means somewhere in Buffalo proper, not in another city. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, their new stadium. We need to know that we have a new stadium to play in in the 2023 season. Um, otherwise, we are not going to sign these one-year extensions unless a deal is in place. Now, granted, we'll sign the lease extension for three years while the other stadium is being built, but we have to know that this stadium is being built. Uh, we're not just going to do, we're just not gonna delay things uh, because Oakland slash Las Vegas being a prime example and a very recent example of, we're just wasting time here and you don't wanna lose your football team. So, um, so that's, the, that, that's what we're dealing with in terms of the timeline. So, I guess I'll leave it at that. There's probably a follow-up question. There. Yeah, there is. So there was talk and I'd been following you over the last couple of months that they wanted to have a deal in place at the end of the year and it rolled over to this year. And now we're really getting into the weeds on kind of the government intricacies of it. But 
if that is true that they wanted something in place by the end of the year, why wasn't something in place and why is the next uh, maybe few months so critical? Well, that's a great question and, and, a, and something that I raised, at least on Twitter, as something to think about. All three sides, we're talking about the state government, uh, Erie County, and the Buffalo Bills, uh, were all very public that they wanted a deal done by the end of the year. They were all in agreement that this was something that was important to them. Not necessarily critical or a deal breaker, but they made it a point to say, uh, and, and you know how politicians are, uh, they generally don't say something unless they have to. Uh, uh, you know, well, okay, I'm already walking that back. They say a lot of things for effect. But when you're talking about something um, like a deadline, that's generally something that has some significance to it. So the fact that we are now recording this on January 12th and there's no deal in place, it at least makes you wonder that if something that was important to them has been blown through, uh, then is there an issue to be had? Now, all three sides, through my reporting and my sourcing and, and things of that nature, are all insistent that this is not a problem that they are still working towards an agreement, their progress has been made, nobody's worrying. Um, so I think that I'm not worried about it, or I say I should say Bill's fans should not be worried about it. Um, so but but you, it makes you wonder why that if that deadline was so important, why? Why did they then ignore it? Are you hearing and I'm talking about all three sides? I'm not saying that anybody's to blame, but all three sides made it a point to say it was important. And here we are two weeks later and a deal's not done. Are you hearing one of the three sides maybe holding it up and maybe not for a malicious, re malicious reason, reasoning, but possibly for um, something that could just be in, inconsequential that, that you, know, you need to dot some I's and cross some T's? Nobody's pointing fingers, uh, which is very healthy, I think. And I'm talking to sources all over the place uh, where they where their names aren't attached to it, or they're telling me this for the sake of, you know, information or background. So uh, yeah, I, I think that it, everything's pretty healthy at this point. The thing that I'll say too, that is very refreshing for me as somebody who's been a sports writer for 30 years and uh, I've worked in markets. Uh, I worked in Las Vegas for five years in which I was constantly writing about perhaps a team moving to Las Vegas. It never happened while I was working there, but I was constantly writing about that. We had ownership uh, entities around the, the major sports programs with ties to Las Vegas. For instance, the Maloofs uh, who bought the uh, Sacramento Kings. We were talking about stadiums. And then I went on to cover the National Hockey League uh, and the Buffalo Sabres. So I covered a team in which its owner was led away in handcuffs. And the team went bankrupt and was taken over by the league and then sold to Tom Galisano. Uh, I then covered the Miami Dolphins the year that Wayne Huizenga sold them to Stephen Ross. So I've covered a lot of really strange sports business and trans major transactions. Um, I am so refreshed about this storyline in that threats are not being made. And that is very unusual. In the NFL, whenever you're talking about a new stadium being built, you can go back with the exception of the major market teams in which the, the owners were paying for it themselves, like Jerry Jones in Dallas or Robert Kraft uh, in New England or uh, the Jets and Giants in the New Meadowlands Stadium. Generally, uh, any stadium that's being built very early on in the story arc, other cities are being dropped as potential relocation uh, possibilities, whether it be Los Angeles, Las Vegas, London, Toronto. Um, and, and probably some of that has to do with the fact that there's not as much leverage anymore to do that with Los Angeles, with two teams now. Las Vegas has a team now. You can't really use Toronto as leverage in the Western New York market because everybody would know that it's a bluff uh, based on the, the flirtations that the Bills had with Toronto uh, and how it a few failed. years ago and, and how it failed uh, in Toronto. So, you know, London seems to be the team that's most associated with Jacksonville. So anyways, there's maybe that's part of it, but I think it's also because everybody knows a deal is going to be done and nobody's sweating it out. So the, for me as a journalist, it's great because I don't have to reach out to the Birmingham, Alabama city councilman, you know, to try to get 
inside information about what they're doing to try to land the bills or Oklahoma City or what St. Louis with what's happened there with their litigation against the NFL. A lot of people now think St. Louis is going to get a team as, as, uh, as a, um, you know, as kind of a settlement, so to speak, for this, uh, this uh, the way it ended, right? For, for Robert, for, uh, for Stan Kroenke uh, extracting the Rams and moving them to Los Angeles against a lot of uh, uh, rules and regulations. So anyways, that's my long-winded way of saying uh, that the fact that other cities aren't being dropped, and they were very, like in the very beginning, but those were, public, those were public relations missteps. Austin, right? Is that the, the one yeah. that came to mind? Austin, it was Austin and it was quickly shot down, but it got legs because it came from an ESPN reporter and a very respected ESPN reporter, but it got legs right away. But Austin is not a city that the NFL is looking at. And within a day or two, people were talking to the local community leaders in Austin, like including the city council president, I think it was, who says, we have had zero discussions about getting an NFL team down here. So I don't know where this is coming from. So it was really shot down quickly. And I think that that was, you know, somebody in the NFL circles, I'm talking about the ownership, not the Bills ownership, but, you know, Seth probably had a source and floated a city to him just as a, hypo a hypothetical. And, and it turned out to, uh, to become a major storyline for at least a, a week or so until people were able to douse it. But um, so you're saying somebody posted something on Twitter and it took off. Can you imagine? I'm shocked. <laughs> Well, so it sounds like in a roundabout way, you're saying at the end of the day, a deal gets done. We don't know the details of it, but the bills are certainly staying in Buffalo. There will be a stadium somewhere. Yeah. Well, the stadium is going to be an orchard park. That, that's, that is, um, that's pretty much decided. Um, it, okay. So the basics are uh, open air stadium, technically an open air stadium, but with roof you know, covering at least Coverage the bills, the their intention is going to be about 80% of the seats are going to be covered in some way. You can think of it uh, like what you see with the Seattle Seahawks stadium, uh, or like you maybe see with, uh, if, if you're a fan of European uh, soccer, uh, the, the stadiums that they have there where, you know, there, there is a, like, there is roofage, you know, that's not a dome. It's not a traditional uh, permanent or retractable dome, but there is coverage uh, over the seats to, to guard you from uh, not only precipitation, but the ability to put heaters uh, up underneath the roofage. Uh, is roofage a word? I don't know. I'm not sure. I, and it, I was going to Google kinda, it actually while you were saying that. It came I, out of my mouth there and I like it. I, I like roofage. Um, if it's not a word, I'm still going to go with it. Um, it so let's, let's stay with it. Um, you don't have to say it. I don't, you, I don't expect you to just go ahead and join in, but I'm going to keep up with it. Um, so there will be roofage, um, prime roofage. I'm going to add, uh, adjectives to this to make it sound even cooler. Let's make it sound better. Uh, but, but, but for uh, those that okay. don't know, uh, we'll get to the, to the weeds of it. The, the, the big thing was if you're not a Bills fan or, maybe just an outsider looking in it was a couple of weeks ago that the bills played new england and the big storyline there was there's 50 mile an hour winds and it was you know josh allen couldn't throw the ball and now we need a dome so the point is this is going to cover or at least i shouldn't use the word cover let me rephrase that this is going to uh fix some of those concerns that fans have this roof this has been an awful weather season even going back to the first few games uh there was either precipitation or rain there has not been much sunlight at all for the bills game now that's just coincidental it's not as though you know western new york is truly that bleak or living up to the stereotype um but it's been a bad weather season and i talk to the photographers about this a lot because they're the ones who are out there in it and have to prepare uh most of more than it maybe even more than the players the photographers because their equipment and everything that they have i'm constantly talking to the photographers and they're rolling their eyes about what an awful season it's been uh not only for that the dress how they dress and protect their equipment but for for, for photography because it's all it's gray all the time yeah. but um so yeah bills fans see what happened against the new england patriots you know 50 mile an hour wins during the game. The Patriots only have to throw the ball three times and they just ran the ball down the bill's throats. Um, the Indianapolis Colts game was a bad weather game in which a team that plays in a dome came to orchard park and dominated the bills, which is, you know, uh, you know, that's heresy uh, to think that a dome team is going to come into orchard park and, and, uh, and just dominate like that. Uh, the bills are supposed to be the team that thrives in the elements. And now here, 
the game on Saturday, the playoff game, the high temperature is, I think, for kickoff, as it's forecasted right now, is supposed to, supposed to be two degrees. So a lot of Bills fans are looking at this and saying, see, this is why we need a dome. Now, a dome isn't going to help Josh Allen throw the football in 2021. And in fact, maybe Josh Allen's not even on the team by the time uh, that they build a dome. But there's a couple things at play here. Uh, Terry Pagula is of a belief that football should be played outside. Uh, so that's a base right there. But I've also interviewed a couple of other NFL owners who've told me that they also think, and these are, these are prominent NFL owners. I, I talked to Jerry Jones of the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, he thinks that, and this is an interesting thing to talk about, maybe not perhaps on this uh, podcast, but uh, interesting thing to consider is that he thinks domes should only be used for air conditioning purposes, meaning the opposite of what you'd think in hot places like in Glendale, Arizona, or his place in Dallas or wherever, uh, Super Bowl sites, New Orleans. Um, and then I also spoke with Art Rooney uh, of the Pittsburgh Steelers, who is probably the most prominent voice on stadiums because he was chair of the NFL's uh, stadium committee for 10, 15 years taking us. I don't have it in front of me, but he was the chairman for a long time. Oh, 20, it was 20 years because it goes back to when most, almost all the stadiums have been built of the, of the newer generation. And um, he told me that he's also of a belief and he's obviously the Steelers owner. He plays outside. He thinks that it should be played outside on grass. And so these are the people that really kind of steer the ship when it comes to a lot of things within the NFL. And they agree with Terry Pagula that uh, they like it as, a, as an open air venue with grass, uh, which is what the Bills want to do. And it'll be scaled down in terms of their seating capacity a little bit to 60 to 64,000 or 62,000, depending on, on how the layout goes once they hire the architect. Uh, and that it'll go in Orchard Park. And it seems as though all the voices are in line with this. Kathy Hochul has, has backed uh, what the Bills want. Uh, and it, she was hesitant for a little while to come out and say publicly, which made some people nervous um, because she was withholding her wishes uh, publicly anyway. Uh, and the bills in, in Erie County weren't exactly sure what she intended to do. But within the last couple of weeks, she has not only said that she favors the Orchard Park site and that she uh, doesn't think a dome is needed. So things, things have uh, really fallen into place in terms of where we are now pretty certain everything is going to happen and what it's going to, the, the basics of, of the stadium, not necessarily what it'll look like yet, but the basics of it uh, have kind of, have, uh, have all floated to the surface uh, within the last uh, three, four weeks. So I'm of the belief that there are very few things in this uh, world that are black and white. I agree. That I, I believe that there's a lot of gray area on pretty much anything, but when I'm looking at following the stadium, um, process. I'm seeing that there's black and white and lines drawn right in the sand on funding, public funding. And it seems like I would say the majority of fans, I don't want to say support, but at least recognize that public funding is going to go to the stadium, whether they support it or not. Several questions on that. Let's start from the first question. Obviously public money is going to be, uh, involved here. Do we know how much, um, what are you hearing in the latest on that? Uh, I, I actually don't have any figures on that. Uh, I, I think that uh, the Pagulas have an amount that they are willing to spend. And if Erie County and New York State want to go above and beyond that, then that is what they are. It's OK for them to do. And the Pagulas will go along with it. But uh, and that goes to the conversations that we would be having if we didn't know uh, if that it's headed to Orchard Park or that it's uh, whether or not it ha has a dome or doesn't have a dome. I, I think that the preference from the bills has always been Orchard Park across Abbott Road in, a, in the parking lot that exists now. The current stadium gets torn down and that gets turned into parking or developed in some small way, whatever. Um, but if we were having this conversation a few weeks ago, we'd still be debating whether, you know, it does it go within the city, uh, down by where the Perry projects are located? Does it have a dome? Does it ha does it not have a dome? All the extra costs that go along with those things. And, um, that would be up to the county and the state 
to figure out if it wanted it. So, um, so no, but in terms of actual dollars or what percentage it will be, I don't know. Uh, but uh, I, I certainly think expect that, state money though, correct? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it, they can get creative with how they do it. Uh, they can do it with bonds. Um, you know, they can, it's not as though there could be, although I have not heard anything about this, but in some markets uh, such as Las Vegas, you have a, you hold a referendum uh, to, or in Detroit, they did this also hold a referendum and uh, we're going to add a, uh, 1% sales tax to hotel rooms, which in a place like Las Vegas, all the people who live there, uh, myself, a former resident say, yeah, no tax problem. those bastards, right? That's not my money. You know, go ahead, bring them in, give them, you know, make them pay for our stadium. In Detroit, it was hotel rooms and rental cars. So again, that's kind of a tourism tax. Um, so, but again, I, that, I have not heard anything about that, uh, but that's something that could you know, theoretically be a way to raise money. So yeah, the state is getting you money, but it's not necessarily tax dollars, which is uh, very early on in this discussion was something that I had to uh, really kind of um, sort through for, for readers, for fans, that it very, it, the narrative was the bills expect taxpayer dollars. Well, that's not the same as public dollars. Uh, because there are all kinds of different ways to raise public money, um, and uh, most notably through bonds, um, in which those are, you know, the, it's not as though it's just coming, it's, it's being taken from your local school district. Now, again, you can say, and I use the word again, theoretically, yes, you could raise a tax, you know, hold, hold a referendum to raise, uh, you know, do a 1% uh, hotel room sales tax on, you um, and then give it to your schools. Yeah, you could do that, but nobody ever seems to want to do that. But it's, uh, anyways, well, th that's, the, other, uh, that's the extent of it. There's all kinds of different ways to raise public money that isn't taxpayer dollars. Sure, and there's and the state does it all the time, pilots, and as you said, bonds, and, and not to get in the weeds on that, but um, there's a way to do it. Now, the other narrative is, well, the Pagulas are filthy rich, so let them pay for it. Now, part of that is true, just because the, Terry Pagula is worth six billion. Doesn't mean probably doesn't mean he has six billion sitting in his bank account. There's a difference between worth and what he has, but that also doesn't mean that he probably can't afford to put more into a stadium, whatever the final dollar is. I don't know his finances, but there's a narrative out there that owners and sports teams should pay for a new stadium if they want it. It's happened, um, but it's certainly what very small percentage of stadiums that get built. So the point is, the Bills aren't doing anything groundbreaking here by seeking state assistance and i'm not trying to defend the bills but the point i'm trying to make is that this is kind of part of how the game is played and i believe that states know that local governments know that and of course teams know that am i off base here no not at all i mean you're talking about when you're talking about uh, owner funded stadiums it's dallas it's the meadowlands it's los angeles it's uh, Miami a long time ago, too, by the way, Miami uh, or no, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry. Not Miami. Not Miami. Miami had some was uh, bonded. In fact, uh, a prominent uh, Canisius College alum uh, helped them with that. I like the uh, plug you gave there. Yeah, Miami's a bad one. Uh, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> I try not to do that, uh, but um, I'm trying to think if I'm leaving any outs. Um, but the point is, but anyway, very few. And the reason uh, New England, if I didn't say that, the reason for that is um, they'll pay for it because it allows them to develop the area. They are getting something out of it. But in smaller markets, pretty much all the other markets beyond that, those top tier, they uh, there's not much ability to develop uh, in Cincinnati. You're not you don't develop the area around uh, the Bengals stadium. Um, and so what happens is it becomes a situation where the, the it's expected and whether or not you agree with it uh, doesn't matter. Uh, this is just the way it is. Uh, I, for one, would not want well, uh, this is on my personal take is that the Pagulas should build their stadium. If it's there, if it's where they want to put their football team and their playpen, then they should build it and run it and own it and the whole thing. But the reality of it is, is that uh, the NFL uh, and the NFL markets have established 
for a long, long time that if you want an NFL team in your city, you're going to have to contribute a lot uh, to keep it there. And that's what happens in all the other markets. Um, so, and even some, a lot of the bigger markets, you know, even in place like, uh, you know, the football Mecca of, of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania uh, and the Steelers and all their tradition there. Um, that was, um, that was done through public assistance. Detroit is a big market um, with major, major corporate dollars and all kinds of things. You know, that, that was, you know, that was public dollars um, and not entirely, but it, it, it's kind of the norm. So the bills get into a situation where they can say, Hey, look, all these other towns are paying for theirs. Why aren't you going to pay for yours? And then it does get into the standoff. Eventually, if somebody wanted to draw a line, a hard line in the stand and say, Terry and Kim Pagula, you are going to have to pay for every dollar of this stadium. We aren't going to do it. You are filthy rich. The NFL is a major, major corporation. You can afford this. And then they could say, and then they would get to a point where they would need to weigh, okay, we can stay here in Buffalo and we can pay 1.4 billion to build the stadium in Orchard Park. Or then all of a sudden you have these other cities, Birmingham, Alabama, or Oklahoma City, or you know, let's even use Austin, even though I don't think that's realistic. But let's do it. Or St. Louis. St. Louis wants a team again. And they start saying, like Baltimore did with Art Modell in Cleveland. Uh, in my uh, my hometown of Cleveland, where they would never lose their Cleveland Browns, um, you all of a sudden start to hear from other cities and governments from around the country that says, you know what, Terry and Kim, I know that uh, you know they're asking you to pay your 1.4 billion. How about if you come down here and we will pick up the entire two billion for a brand new stadium in our city? Now, two billion dollars is two billion dollars, or 1.4 billion is one point. Whether you have, you know, it's the, the money spends the same. So then you, you want to get into a situation and that's the thing that's kind of lurking always in the back of, of local politicians and fans minds. Do you ever want to get to a situation where you are weighing on just pure dollars and a, versus a businessman's heart uh, or his, his, his whims uh, or his, his sentiment um, $2 billion buys an awful lot of nostalgia uh, or is going or can, or can compensate for whatever being, you want to call me a bad guy for the rest of the, the, for all times, like Art Modell. Well, you know, Art Modell ended up with some money and, and got all his debt paid off is really what happened. And a super, and a Lombardi trophy. And yeah, I'm sure that it bothered him on his deathbed that he was hated in Cleveland, but I don't think he regretted the move. Well, and the Pagulas and, and use the term saved the bills. They saved the Sabres, right? That's, that's kind of the, at least that's what it looked like, right? I mean, Bills fans and Sabres fans were not too confident. I don't think they saved the Sabres, but I do think they saved, they, they potentially saved the Bills. And I think that's a little overdone. Okay, so the Sabres weren't even for sale when the Pagulas bought them. It wasn't as though the Sabres were- I go back to the Galasano pr probably saved the Sabres more than the Pagulas, correct? I would say that's the case, yes. And uh, the point I'm trying to make is- the time. Well, the point I want to make is it's still- it's still a business, right? It's not, they didn't do it for charity. It's still a business that they have to make money on and that they're obviously making money on. Let's be honest about it. They're obviously making money let on me, it. Let me, let me just interject a quick point because and then we'll layer and then we'll lay Cause I think there's a layer to this. So, okay. Even if you're of the belief that the, all right. So the Pagulas we we've seen it Pagulaville, um, uh, right around the corner from where I live is a bar called the Amherst Pizza and Ale House in which they have placards hanging on the uh, from the ceiling, in fact, that says, Terry and Kim Pagula, thank you for saving our sports teams. Uh, you know, there's stuff all over. Terry Pagula's, uh, you know, our mission is to win Stanley Cups. There's, there's quotes from Terry Pagula hanging in this sports bar. The Pagulas are mostly hated right now in Western New York for what they've done with their hockey team which has not been successful and they are viewed despite the bill's success as people who got lucky uh with by falling backwards into the head coach sean mcdermott and their general manager brandon bean who then drafted the quarterback josh allen etc cetera, etc cetera. so the team the pagulas don't the pagulas get all the blame for the sabers woes and none of the credit for the bill's success is that fair so let's no, it's not entirely, but it's, there's a lot to that. But the point I'm, the point I'm making is let's look at it from their standpoint. They were heroes for 
a little bit, like especially right after they bought the Bills, they were heroes. Now they're vilified here. How busted up, really, if, if, if that line were ever drawn in the sand about we're not going to pay for this, I mean, to, to actually bet on the fact that, oh, Terry and Kim Pagula would never move the, move the bills. Uh, well, wait, wait a minute. People already hate them here. Um, it, there's all kinds of reasons why they would. So, I mean, that's just kind of, I mean, I, I don't mean to, you know, roll a grenade into the, into the, <laughs> into the podcast here, but I mean, it, Again, I'm, I'm falling back on my memories in 1993, 1994, when the Browns all of a sudden just left, something that was impossible to do uh, in the minds of any, any uh, Northeastern Ohioan. Um, it can happen. I mean, they, I don't think they'd be as sentimentally or all busted up to, to move their team somewhere else as you think. Just, I mean, Bills fans, I think, bank on sentimentality and tradition way too much. Um, that's the 53rd largest market in the NFL. If the NFL were to start a league from scratch today, Buffalo wouldn't even be close to getting a team. Um, they are the second smallest market and only, uh, the green Bay Packers as the outlier that they are community owned green Bay Packers are the only smaller team. Uh, Buffalo has one fortune 500 company, M and T bank at number 444. You take a look, you know, Cincinnati has a bunch of Fortune 500 companies, including some in the top 100. Uh, you take a look at the smaller markets in the NFL and wonder, well, how do they do it? Indianapolis, same thing. Um, Buffalo, Buffalo's kind of hanging in there. So, uh, again, it, it, but circle back to very early in the conversation, threats are not being made. So that's the thing that is uh, that I think that Bills fans should be, and, and Western New Yorkers should be like, oh, you know, this isn't, we aren't being held hostage here, at least not yet. Uh, I guess it could happen still if things fall apart, but it looks as though everything's going to be smooth and, and done. All right. So let's end on that point. When you, so you'd expect an agreement, obviously this year, right? And I say, obviously, because if nothing happens this year, then we're, sounds like we're in big trouble. So, and by we, I mean, Bill's community. So um, you expect an announcement this year. Uh, the goal is to get the stadium built by 2025 what happens when Josh Allen wins the Super Bowl in the stadium for the first time and not in that stadium, but playing in that stadium throughout the year. And then the Super Bowl happens because they're, oh, I mean, they're I obviously they're... going to win at least two or three before the stadium gets. Oh, done. well then it won't matter nearly as much because they'll already have their two Lombardi. They'll have the banner. They'll, they'll be banner. And you as a bills fan need to hope that Josh Allen's still on the team. Um, which means that he hasn't, uh, you know, hurt himself or, or, uh, you know, uh, wow. taking a few steps back, bring in the, that's a long time. That's a long time from now. Uh, yeah. So uh, does Josh Allen play in this new stadium or that's, you know, the talk of the dome, you know, does, does Josh right. Allen even get in the dome? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think that uh, the future is really bright for the bills. I, I'm being a wise guy. Uh, I do. Uh, I think it's a long road for them to win the Super Bowl this year. Um, but I do think it's, I'm not writing it off at all. I'm not a skeptic. I think they do have a legitimate shot and, uh, the team is built for for winning for a few years how big is that window yeah well what happens where you're, where you're really going to need to see uh getting to where they are now is a lot easier than maintaining it right because now you've paid the quarterback his quarter of a billion dollars and it's going to be more difficult uh to keep the other players around him you're going to have to make a lot of tough decisions. Some really good players are going to have to leave because the bills aren't going to be able to afford to keep them under the salary cap. And that is the cost of success. Uh, when you get really good football teams, other general managers and coaches take a look at what's on the bills roster and say, Oh, I want that guy. And maybe they overpay for a guy like uh, Levi Wallace, the cornerback who's, who's playing uh, better than anybody expected. Uh, he's going to get paid a lot of money by somebody, maybe not the bills, but it's going to be hard as a human being to say, Hey, you know, football players don't look at it and say, you know, I don't think I'm worth that much. I'm going to, I'm just going to take whatever the bills want to pay me. Uh, no, they're going to, they're going to cash in. And so um, that's where it gets difficult. And that's where Brandon Bean is going to uh, earn his money from now on. He's drafted. Well, he's built the team. Now he needs to find ways to keep it together. So uh, the window can be long. If he is, a, is if he's adept at uh, at maintaining uh, what is, what he already has, but the key part 
is the quarterback and they have that and um, they're not going to have to worry about that for hopefully for five, seven years. Tim Graham, he writes for the athletic by Tim Graham, B Y Tim Graham on the Twitter sphere, a fantastic follow. And by fantastic, I mean, not just your sports stories are up there, but uh, some wit and charm and some, um, a lot of other things on your, on the your occasional Twitter. vulgarity. Yeah. Yeah. It's not bad if you, uh, if you're okay with that type of thing. No, but an interesting feed. And I really appreciate it. Very uh, well-versed on this topic. Um, uh, appreciate you taking the time. And I guess, as they say in Western New York, you don't say goodbye, right? You say, uh, go Bills. Well, you're a journalist, so you can't say that, right? <laughs> right. I'm supposed to reply with that, but I can't. Okay. I Fair can't. Enough. But I do, I do appreciate you, uh, you coming on and um, enjoy the ride if you get to travel with the team. Which I, I will say I hope the Bills do win the Super Bowl. Number one, it would be fun to cover. Uh, but number two, um, I'm not from Buffalo and no, I'm not a fan of the bills, but a lot of people in my life who I love, uh, and who I enjoy being with, uh, I would like for them to be happy. So Great. sure. Let's, uh, yeah, I won't, I won't use the, the fan phrase, uh, but I'll, I'll say that I hope they do win it all. All right. I appreciate you coming on. Thanks a lot. Tim. Thank you, Patrick.